Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. Uh, we are looking at a, given a table, we've got to then determine a rule and then interpret that rule with uh, talking about the components of slope and y-intercept. So this is a problem from CPMs course three, and this is section 9.2.2, specifically number 9-77. So it says, write the rule for the table to write. So here's the, here's the process I use. I, I have a couple points here. I am given, or more than that, I'm given this set, right? When x equals 4, y equals negative 11. This one here, when x equals negative 2, y equals 1. And when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1. So I can I can use those to find my rule. Remember, the rule is I am doing something to this independent variable to get the dependent variable. I'm doing some math here, right? So I look first and say, well, what? How can I go from 4 to negative 11? Well, I could take that x, which is the 4 in this case, and subtract 15, right? 4 minus 15 is negative 11, right? So that could be the rule, but let's check it. Will it work for this? If I put a negative 2 in place of the x, that'd be negative 2 minus 15, which would be negative 17. So that's not it because that doesn't give me 1. So that can't be it, right? So I just keep testing. Now, what if I would have multiplied by 2 first? What if I said 2 times x? So 2 times x uh, would give me 8. And then to get from 8 to negative 11, I'm going to have to subtract. Now it's going to get more. I'm subtracting more. So something's not seeming right here. So I, I think what's got to happen is I'm going to have to deal with a negative number. So what if I, instead of do negative 2 or positive 2x, what if I do negative 2? Meaning let's multiply by a negative to get this negative first. So negative 2 times 4 is uh, negative 8. And then to get there would be just to subtract 3. So that looks more manageable. So let's see what we can do with this. Is that going to give me this one? If I said negative 2 times negative 2, I get positive 4. Positive 4 minus 3 is 1. Oh, look at that. And then let's check this. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then positive 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Oh, I, I lucked out. That is the rule. So there's my rule that makes this work. And I just did that by playing around with multiplication, right? I, I Let me go back to what I was going to do. I kind of paused. If I just started with 2x, that would have been 2 times 8, 2 times 4 to get 8. But to get 8 to become a negative 11, I would have had to subtract by 17. So that's why I stopped there. I realized there's no way I'm going to have to subtract 17 and end up with these smaller numbers, right? Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, minus 17 is like negative 21. So I knew that wasn't going to get me there. So I thought I, I need to probably incorporate my multiplier. My coefficient should be negative in order to get that number to be negative. So that's kind of why I went that direction. So play around with the math until you get the combination that works. So what's my rule? My rule then is y is equal to negative 2x minus 3, right? Every y, you take the x and multiply by negative 2, then subtract 3. Okay, so that being the rule, now I got to determine what's the slope and y-intercept. Well, don't forget the standard form for, or not standard form, but the uh, graphing form, the slope-intercept form, is y equals mx plus b, where m does represent your slope, and b, oops, plus b, sorry, and b is represents your y-intercept. So as long as it's in this form, I can pull the slope and the y-intercept from it. So if I look... Where's my m? My m is the coefficient of the x. So that number, that negative 2, is the, is the slope. So slope is equal to negative 2. And a lot of times you think of slope as rise over run, right? Sometimes we would talk about slope as a fraction when we're graphing it. So you could also write it as a fraction, negative 2 over 1. Either way, but your slope is that negative 2. What's the y-intercept? Y-intercept, remember, is the b. But remember, this, the standard, the slope-intercept form has a plus in front of the b. So if I go back to my equation, that's a minus. So that just means my b is negative. So the y-intercept is negative 3. And remember, every point is written x comma y. And so the y-intercept, the x is 0. In this case, the y is negative 3. So my y-intercept is <clears throat> 0, negative 3. All right. There we go.